Uh, earlier this year, I talked about the baby formula crisis in the United States. Uh, we did a show on that. Uh, Scott Lincecum, who is uh, one of my favorite commentators on economic policy these days, he's excellent. If you don't follow Scott Lincecum, uh, L-I-N-C-I-C-O-M-E on Twitter, you should. He is excellent. Glenn, thank you for the $100. Really, really appreciate it. See, that's how we're going to get on these shows. The 250 is if people jump in with that kind of support. I really appreciate that. Um, Scott has been on top of this baby formula a story from its beginning. Uh, there was a massive shortage in baby formula in the late spring and in the summer. I mean, parents were frantic. Parents were desperate. Uh, you know, 75% of, of babies in the United States depend uh, to some extent on the availability of baby formula. And there was a real shortage for a variety of reasons, which I covered before, a closing by the FDA of a particular plant, but more deeply, a complete distortion of the market in the United States of baby formula because of the way welfare is allocated, welfare to to, to uh, poor mothers who uh, th that money is used to buy baby formula and how they allocate that and how they subsidize it. Basically, government, the, uh, government, involvement, in the, government involvement in this um, market completely distorted the market and it helped create uh, very few suppliers domestically. And, and, and uh, when they shut down the Abbott plant, um, there was a, a significant shortage but also, uh, the shortage is caused by the fact that uh, we don't import baby formula. For example, Europe is a massive manufacturer of baby formula. And what's interesting is Europe has very stringent food safety regulations. Why don't we just accept the FDA equivalent in Europe as a good standard and just import all the baby formula Europe can produce? The shortage would have been gone if we had done that. Uh, it took the FDA a long time to allow for more baby formula to enter into the country from Europe. It did ultimately. The U.S. lowered tariffs on baby formula um, earlier in the year, uh, and, and by lowering, so we have tariffs on baby formula. Who knew? See how these things, and that of course restricts uh, importation, but also the FDA doesn't approve a lot of the companies that, and they have to go through an approval process. Why? when food in Europe is just as healthy, if not healthier, than in the U.S. So why doesn't the FDA just say, if you get approved in Europe, you're okay in the United States as well? And, and vice versa, you know, if the FDA approves something, the Europeans should say, sure, it's approved here as well. They, they should do that with drugs, and they should do that with, uh, with food. Anyway, in spite of the fact that they opened up, in spite of the fact that the FDA allowed some food, some formula to come in from Europe, in spite of the fact that tariffs were lowered, 25% um, tariffs on, form, on baby formula. Why? To protect American manufacturers, to protect the welfare system, basically. I mean, again, I'm not going to go through the whole story that I went through in the baby formula story I did earlier this year. Anyway, there's still a baby formula shortage. It's not as bad as it was. It's, it's a lot less, but there's still shortages in, in, in significant parts of the country. And... Um, Congress uh, suspended the, uh, the tariffs earlier in the year uh, in order to reduce the impact, in order to, to reduce the impact. The Abbott plant in Michigan has been reopened, but there's still a shortage, and tariffs are expected to snap back in January 2023. I love tariffs. Tariffs is like the dumbest tax of all. Why are we taxing baby formula? I mean... Is it because we have a trade deficit with Europe? Anyway, let's hope. Hope. Hope is all we have. Let's hope that uh, people like Scott Lincecum and others who put pressure on Congress to try to get rid of these, maybe, maybe even permanently, permanently eliminate tariffs on baby formula coming in from anywhere in the world and... Uh, uh, you know, allow, uh, let's get real pressure on the FDA to allow the importation of baby formula from Europe without the FDA having to give its own additional stamp of approval. Same should be with Canada. There's certain countries that even at the current, even at the current regulatory structure, we can make things a lot easier to import stuff by just accepting uh, kind of a, a each other's regulatory 
regimes. Now, I'd like to see the regulatory regimes eliminated completely and privatized and for private certification to arise and for baby formula and everything else. But short of that, we've got an FDA. It's not going away. Let's at least do some rational steps to, 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 to make it function better. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see The Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.